Okay, so that's three locations. Basically. And we've got like four different type of looks. Yeah, I reckon we can smash this out in about an hour or two. That was me in a commercial, which I also edited and that we filmed in less than one afternoon. I'd say it's pretty good. What is good everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all well. Now, before we start, I just wanna apologize for my dead, dead trim. I haven't been able to get a haircut since I went out to the Maldives because there's been another lockdown over here in the UK, which means there's nothing open still. No hairdressers, no restaurants, absolutely nada, nothing. With the lockdown in mind, as we're gonna be spending a lot more time at home, myself and Con, if you guys don't remember Con, I done the photography bingo challenge video with him. He's an amazing, amazing videographer, director. He's done all or majority of KSI's music videos. He films for the Sidemen. His work is absolutely incredible. Go over and check out Con. I will put his link in the description. But me and Con decided to get together and work on a little project which you guys can get involved in and that is the Sidemen editing challenge because I've got some really good not just photographers I've got some really good editors following me so I thought I would get all of you lot involved as well so let's go over to the rules of how to enter this challenge rule number one the video must be 30 seconds to a minute long anything over a minute will not be seen so make sure you stick to that that time frame rule number two now I'm going to emphasize on this only use music from epidemic sound now, reason being is because it avoids any copyright claim or issue that we get when we react to the video or react to your video, your edit. And second of all, Epidemic Sound is the best place for music online, hands down. I've been using Epidemic for about, I don't even know how long, forever. Since I started YouTube anywhere, I wanna get sound effects, I wanna get tracks, pretty much any cinematic sequence you've seen on my channel. If you guys do want to enter this, make sure to go to Epidemic Sound, use the link in the description, sign up. They have a membership which you can sign up to and it is amazing. There is so much on there. And if you're a creator and you want to get some cool sound effects, music for your videos, Epidemic Sound. That is rule number two. You must submit your edit over on Instagram and use the hashtag SDMN edit challenge and that will allow Con to look up that hashtag and see all of the entries to the contest. You must also tag Con and Sidemen Clothing and me if you want to. Uh, that is how to submit. And the deadline for this is the 5th of February. So that will give you about five days from this video to get your edit over on Instagram. Last but not least, I will put a link in the description, the top link in the description as a matter of fact, where you can go over and download all of the footage, all of the raw footage from this shoot. Con has basically got a load of selects together from the entire day and have basically compressed it down into to this file where you guys can go over and download it and work on your edit. Have fun with this. It's creative freedom and I think it's a great, great little competition slash challenge for everyone across all spectrums, whether you're watching my videos or Con's videos, just to take part in seeing as now we're gonna be spending a lot more time at home. So those are the rules, I hope they are clear. <clears throat> all right, so we've arrived at our location. I've not been here before, Ben's been here a couple of times before, and he has a few suggestions of where we can shoot certain looks. So from this one location, we can get about three to four different looks. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. <laughs> I could get some low down shots on the gimbal. Watch this. You know why I love this gimbal? Look at this, in, in like five seconds, I am now underslung. I don't have much direction for you. I thought we could just sort of freestyle it and get you walking around. I'm gonna go for the, the wide shots first. And then after the wides, I'm gonna focus on detail. So I'll get it from where I am now and then I'll hop out or I'll go on different levels and I'll get the same action over and over again. The location that we went to was 
perfect. It was a super industrial, really moody looking car park, which was completely empty, which we got so lucky with. There were no cars driving in and out. We basically had this whole car park to ourselves, which was great. We were able to go to different parts of the location and shoot different looks. So I was trying to say, so that it didn't all look the same because if we just shot in one sort of specific location within the car park, it would have looked a bit boring. And we decided we're gonna to go to different parts of the car park, switch it up. And ultimately, I think that's what made this uh, day a lot easier because usually if we had a lot longer, we'd have to go to different locations every day. Whereas here we went to like one location and shot loads of different looks and it kind of looked like we were in different spots, which was uh, which was really great and easy because it allowed us more time shooting than traveling around and finding spots. All right, so we've got a good mixture of clips. We've got some 4K, 8K stuff. The 4K stuff will be in slow motion, which is great. Uh, I want to see people using slow motion and it's got some close-up shots, got some wide. Uh, I did some wide shots while I went across these pillars. Yeah. So that could be a good transitional point for people to use. A lot of people love pillars. using that. Yeah, I went yeah. past the pillars and I got like wide shots and close up shots with that, with you looking around. Yeah. So I think we've got a good variety in that outfit. Stand up. Oh, actually no. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, that's sick. I like this. This, this video is getting a bit more cinematic as we go. So I'm, well. in my head, when I shoot stuff, I'm trying to tick off the list in my head of what are some impressive cinematic shots that we can get? Con decided to actually rent out the new Canon R5 with the new DJI Ronin RS2. The reason why is because the Canon R5 actually shoots in 8K and in 4K 120, which was amazing to edit with and to work with. For me being an editor, shooting and editing 4K 120 is absolutely beautiful. I wish my Sony could do that. So that means it might be time for a little upgrade. The lens that Con was using on the Canon was the 24 to 240 mil, which I didn't even know existed. I wonder how much that is actually. That's intrigued me now. Canon 200, 899 pounds. So that's pretty much a thousand pound lens that we were using. And we didn't use any other lens apart from that because we were able to get every single focal length. But unfortunately, because we were shooting at F5 and then I think at F6, we relied a lot on daylight, and then when it got to nighttime, Con brought in the big boys, the Nandlite Forza 200, and the Titan Astera light tubes to create some light on me, because obviously that lens didn't shoot any lower than F4. Let me check, I'm really bad with Canon lenses, I'm sorry. Any Canon user watching this, F4 to F6.3. Before I start editing any cinematic sequence or put any special effects or stuff like that in, I always try and get the song first, because once you have the main song and the main beat you wanna edit to it will make life a bit easier for you because you can sort of edit and match your cuts to that beat. I much prefer not to sort of overcrowd it with transitions. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and on Instagram. This is just my personal preference by the way. I'm not saying this is wrong or right but I much prefer to watch videos that have really nice subtle cinematic just cuts, nice masks and stuff and um, really subtle transitions in rather than watching and seeing videos that are crazy and madly sort of over done with transitions because I feel like it gives me a bit of a headache and I can't really appreciate the shot. It's a bit too fast for me and I just kind of struggle to keep up with it. But again, this is just my personal preference when watching and editing. One creator that I was really, really inspired by, by the name of J.R. Alley, he uses really nice sort of, they're really quick transitions and with the sound effects that he does, he's made a video, I think uh, cinematic in London and he used some really, really nice transitions in that. They were quite quick, but they were also really seamless. That was who I was sort of inspired by and the style of editing that I went for for this particular sequence. Looking into the first couple of opening shots, I made sure that each shot that I selected was a rotating shot around me. So Con would be going around me with the gimbal. So then I was actually able to speed up the beginning and the end of each clip and add a Gaussian blur over every single cut. So it looked seamless. The whole thing looked seamless and the camera was constantly rotating around me. Two frames to the left, two frames to the right. Again, constantly speeding up the beginning and the end of each clip. So it looks completely seamless using that Gaussian blur effect. And I also added a bit of an anamorphic flare overlay to a lot of the shots where you had the blue and the pink light. Was it pink? It looks red on my screen for some reason here. Yeah, it's definitely pink. Using that sort of anamorphic flare overlay, I actually was able to give it a bit more of a cinematic look. See that? See how it just makes it look 
but uh, it makes it look more cinematic. It makes it look like you're part of a film. You, you get what I mean. Now, the most time consuming part to this whole cinematic sequence was the color grading. Now, I love to color grade. Color grading is like one of my favorite things. I like it just as much as editing photos. I see it as the same thing. You're color grading photos, you're color grading video. And with the grading on this, I put so much time and effort to getting the colors right. Because we're working with quite a few different scenes, obviously we've got daylight, we've got night, it was quite tricky so I pretty much graded every single clip by itself once I had a grade for one scene so for example the scene where it was nighttime and I had like the pink and blue lights around me I made a grade for that specific scene and I was actually able to copy that grade once I've made it onto the other ones and the same with every single clip in that environment so that saved me a bit of time but getting the colors right I was just a, such a perfectionist at it. I just was there for hours, turning and playing around with the dials. The tone curve actually allowed me to brighten and darken certain areas. So when you're shooting in a flat picture profile and it kind of looks a bit faded, you play around with that tone curve, you can really sort of crush those blacks, bring up the highlights, and especially the shots of me, like my face, the really close ups of my eyes. Playing with that tone curve, I was able to really crush those blacks and bring out the highlights in my skin. So I'm really excited to see what you guys uh, are gonna come up with. I've already seen a few entries which look really really cool someone played around with animation which i thought was so sick deadline 5th of february all the rules i've spoken about before and that is the end of the video i hope you guys did enjoy it if you did and you want me to do more stuff like this with con leave a like rating go and check out con's channel download all of the footage down in the description below and i will see you all very very soon next week take care peace